Welcome back to the show, everybody. we got a great one lined up for you today. You're going to love it. Casino Coin Lobby app going live just days away. We're going to give you some facts and features on that. NFTs on the XRP ledger getting major attention now. SEC's Hester Purse on how close are we to crypto regulations? Yeah, how close are we, Hester? Uh, Stansberry Research and crypto crash before the real boom takes place? And how about Ray Dalio giving a macro view of our current state of our monetary system? system. Well, you're going to want it, but you may not like it. LIBOR, end of an error. Why is this so important to us, specifically Ripple and XRP? I think we're going to really help clear some of that up today. Sandy O'Connor from Ripple and BYN Mellon now. And Rosie Rios says the train has already left the station, but guess what? We're going to prove it to you today. And how about some price action in the next month or so? We're going to take a look at that and so much more. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above and everything that we're talking about here today. $2.209 trillion market cap. We're off by 5%. We're bleeding heavy this morning. That's right. Crypto is currently falling like a manhole cover from the sky. Right now, Bitcoin is $46,900 plus. Ethereum is $3,700 plus. And we look right here. Solana is coming in at $172 and change. Cardano is $1.37. XRP is at $0.83 cents right now. You're welcome. Bought a big bag yesterday for me and Mrs. Backup, and that is probably why the price is down. I mean, every time I buy, it seems like the price goes down. I should have split half of what I was going to do knowing that, and then I could have really got a bargain today. We're off by more than 10% on the seven day, and 6.6 .6 plus of that is happening in the last 24 hours. Let's take a look at the price range here. We may have something for you of interest today when it comes to what's going on with crypto and the current prices. Right now, we're looking at 0 0.8282 on the bottom and 0 0.8955 on the top. Remember, 85 cents was a support line. We seem to be below that at the moment. So we may head down to the 75, 65 cent range in lower support levels if this continues to bleed and sell off. I also want to remind people as well, there's a lot of tax harvesting that goes on this time of year, right at the end of the year where people will sell their positions and then get back in to get that tax loss. Uh, complete for their um, reporting of their taxes. I don't particularly do that, but I know a lot of people that do. Take a look at this. Now, this is some good news. You guys know I love Casino Coin. Shout out to Daniel and the new CEO. I think it's Mark Robs in there. And this is just some really identifiable features for the app to get you to understand what's coming here. And it's just days away is what they're saying at Casino Coin now. Integrating blockchain, know your customer, anti-money laundering, and payments into one easy-to-use solution. That's right. You don't have to go to these crypto exchanges and buy Casino Coin to play in the app. Look at this. Multiple platforms and exclusive rewards all in one place. Single point of KYC, know your customer on the Casino Casino Coin Network, which means you go in, you create a profile, you register KYC, and all of the different casino platforms that are available inside of the app, you're KYC for all of them. One and done. That's how you do it. Virtually free and near instant deposits and withdrawals. Amazing. The non custodial Zoom wallet, which I have, allows you to have full control over your funds of Casino Coin. You can take those winnings from casino to casino. Uh, XRP Ledger currently charges transaction fee less than 0 0.00000676. How about that for low cost transaction fees, right? Regardless of the deposit amount. Over 100,000 members on Casino Net uh, so far. Full blockchain traceability, unprecedented access transaction history, including verified identities and complete coin flow. How about that? Really, really amazing stuff. Now, before I go any further, I do want to tell you guys, Pure VPN, if you go to my link in the description or comment section, the very top link, you can click on that and it will take you to Pure VPN page. And I'm telling you, you get the best deal, five-year deal, 88% off for $1.33. 
ladies and gentlemen, it's more important now than ever, especially knowing how crypto is going to explode at some point. And we don't want nobody to take our portfolios or have access to our holdings, no matter what. But this is one of the best ways and layers of protection you can use for yourself online. Not the only thing, but certainly one of the many layers I use. And it's leave no digital trace for your identity. That's what matters for me right there. And you can get that for very, very cheap. 88% off. Make sure you check it out. Now, let's get into this news right here, ladies and gentlemen. This is Chemstar. Huge. 2.7 million followers, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah creates news and social interactions online entertainment business look this guy is saying do they make nfts on the xrp network or whatever these eth gas fees are insane xrp would be way cheaper way faster etc shout out to chemstar or keemstar whatever your name is i appreciate you uh this is really bringing attention to over two million people with the problem with ethereum's gas fees yeah, those gas fees are not a solution make for the fourth industrial revolution. Yeah, how about that? Well, Matt Hamilton chimes in right here. Shout out to you, Matt. Very soon now, there's a draft spec XLS-20 for native NFTs on the XRP ledger, as opposed to the various ways people have been simulating NFTs uh, on there so far. He says it needs to be voted on by the network, but will be launching on DevNet very soon it will certainly be a lot cheaper. I tell you, when this really opens up onto the XRP ledger in mass, it is going to be like a gold rush is what I'm seeing there. Let's see right here, because this is Hester Purse talking to uh, Bloomberg Live about when are we getting any crypto regulation? And I love the skepticism that the journalist, the reporter asks, when do you think that might happen? Listen to this clip. And he's been very clear that he thinks that having a federal financial regulator of the crypto markets is 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 something he'd like to see. What do you think the chances of that happening are? Well, there's a lot of attention now. I mean, crypto has been growing so quickly, so there's a lot of attention in Congress and, and at regulatory agencies. But Congress has a lot on its plate, and so I don't know whether Congress is, is, is going to be able to take the time to build a, a regulatory framework. We could do some of it on our own, but again, there's some jurisdictional questions, and I think we've seen in, in the last couple of weeks that the CFTC uh, may have a different mm -hmm. view of jurisdiction than we do. So where this will end up, I, I don't know. And that's the problem. You don't know. And I know, Hester, you, you are a crypto advocate, and I understand that. But if you really want to be an advocate, you have an opportunity right here, okay? And it's not what Gary... Gensler's passive aggressive approach here to where he's going. And I think we all know. But look at the ridiculousness of this. Not only is the SEC not really covering what's going on here with XRP holders in this lawsuit and the Ethereum free pass, but I've tagged Coindesk, Decrypt Media, AMB, Bitcoin Magazine, You Today. Where are these people? Where's FinCEN, the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, for God's sakes? Where are these people at? Let's all tag them because the reality is here is that I'm sharing with you a TIG post. I would love to hear at the SEC, Hester Purse, Allison Heron Lee, Gary Gensler would love to get your feedback on this, even if it comes with the disclaimer that you always shove up our ass, that it's just your personal opinion and not the view of the SEC. Thanks in advance. This is actually a tweet here of the written transcription of Joseph Lubin explaining how to investors, how they can disguise their identity online. Listen, first he says, obviously, that the uh, ETH that's being sold is for developers only. It is not sold for speculative purposes. It is uh, decentralized and people bought it for those reasons and that it has grown. Radically decentralized, never was a security and certainly is not now. To people pull of Ether in order these businesses and operate their systems will issue a bunch of Ether in a pre-sale to people who buying it for the, using, for the using in their businesses or to people who buy it for and yeah, or to people who buy it for speculative reasons. He says, there's a question, will there be a limit in the amount a person can invest in Ethereum? And we've played this audio clip in, for you guys, but you need to hear this because this is the problem with the SEC. 
he he goes on, Lubin goes on to explain here, you can invest in and a person can buy from any number of different identities. We may limit the size, the unit of sale, just to make it easier to disguise, he says. Is this the practices approved by the SEC here? When are we going to see them actually step up and rule on this? Maybe we need the FBI. Maybe we need the Department of Justice. Maybe we need FinCEN to know about this. Uh, you know, he goes on to talk about how you can use pseudonymous accounts, which is fake accounts, to be able to create and disguise even more of your investments. And he's explaining here basically how you can actually invest for speculative reasons at this point. The conversation changes drastically here. When are we going to see a level playing field here? That's all we want a level playing field so we can all have the opportunity to see billions and possibly trillions of dollars launched off of the networks that we believe in, as well as we've seen billions for the Ethereum network. But first cryptos, you... Let's talk about this. First cryptos, this is Stansberry Research right here, talking with a uh, uh, gentleman who has an incredible look at what's going on here. And he's going to tell you about this, and I hope that I don't have to cut this clip out of the video, but let's take a look at this because he has really something great to say here about all of this. And one second, I have to check and make sure this clip is something I can play for you. One second. What a shame. I don't think I can actually play this clip because of the music that's behind it, but I do want to tell you that this gentleman makes a very good point in this about the fact that we could be seeing a crash of a baby bubble that's taking place in crypto right now and also a correction in the stock market. But what he points out as a, as a comparison here is that you when, remember when we saw Amazon go up over 100 bucks and then it crashed like 95% back down to $5. And then it rose up from the ashes from there. He sees a similar similar type scenario happening in the crypto space as well, but it being a healthy moment where it can wash out all of the projects that don't actually have any real use case and leave us with the ones that will survive, the ones that will rise up and become the, the Googles, the Amazons, the Apples, and all of this of the actual crypto blockchain space. I really wish I could play that clip for you, but there I can't. There are three monetary systems. Now I can play this one because I don't think that, let me check this. This is, this is uh, Ray Dalio talking about three monetary systems here. And I, I he basically goes through this and breaks it down to say that the system that we are in now is a fiat system, right? We're no longer backed by gold. We weren't using gold like we did way back in the early days before we went to a gold-backed dollar. We got off the gold-backed dollar, and now we're in a fiat system. And that system is stressed to the max. And he sees all of this as a very cyclical kind of thing where we are at the end of a cycle here. And I don't want to take the risk of getting a copyright strike here to let you hear it. But that is the gist of what he says, because we've printed so much money and it just continues to go down in value. It all brings us to this understanding. We are at the end of an era in lending. We are at the end of an era at the same time in a monetary cycle, just like Ray Dalio has said. But this really brings it home. And what they're talking about is LIBOR has now been replaced with a much more solid and reliable benchmark because the LIBOR rate is too easy to manipulate, they say. That's why this matters. Banks racked up some $9 billion in fines and a number of traders received prison sentences. That's how bad the LIBOR rate is. Because LIBOR was generated by surveying banks and asking them what their interbank lending rates were, it was easy for the banks to lie in the direction that would make their traders the most money. Think about that. This has been the standard, the, the London interbank uh, offer rate, right? That's what we're talking about. This really is like, I mean, it is a huge problem. In fact, yeah, it's the London Interbank offer rate, and we know that they're moving to a new system. They're transitioning to a new system for this lending rate between banks. Think of this for a moment. What does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means we are moving to a new system. 
There is no more a guess. It is the end of an error, just like Axios says in lending. Well, guess what? Complement that with understanding what we're going to. This is Sandy O'Connor from Ripple. From Ripple. How would Ripple acquire someone like this who is a part of the transition to this new lending rate? And if you think they're switching to a new lending rate and that's just all of it, and we're not going to a new system altogether, well, you must be on planet Xanadu because one doesn't come without the other. I, I, I assure you of that. Listen to this quick clip here. Is now used. Anyone want to guess for how many, <clears throat> how many uh, in notional values? $200 trillion are referenced off of the U.S. dollar LIBOR rate. How many transactions do you think happens in each day on average in three months, which is the busiest one? Any guesses? Five trades. Five trades are happening on average every single day. It is the biggest inverted triangle you've ever seen. On average, its total value is about $500 million. Houston, do we have a problem? $200 trillion off of $500 million. So how does LIBOR get calculated? Well, you've got these panel banks that submit what they think LIBOR is, and it's supposed to be transactions-based. Well, if there are only five transactions and there are 16 tra pa panel banks, not enough transactions to go around, my friends. So, in fact, they have to use expert judgment. And therein is the instability of the rate. There is an awful lot of risk to use expert judgment on setting a rate for $200 trillion. So that's not really very good. So what did we do? Well, first thing, if you're going to transition away from something, what do you need? Something to go to. Um, so this public-private partnership that is has in place with public policymakers set up by the Public-private partnerships set in place with policymakers to come up with a new rate. The Federal Reserve Board, the Fed, the CFTC, the U.S. Treasury, OFR. Um, we came to the table to identify a new risk-free rate as an alternative to LIBOR for use in derivatives. And we came up with this rate called the Secured Overnight, overnight Financing Rate. It's a, it's a repo rate. It has transactions, daily transactions in the overnight of $750 billion every single day. And it is now produced by the New York Fed. No, sub no submitting banks. No expert judgment. IOSCO compliant, for those of you who are geeking out like I do and understand that that's a standard setter, and they tell you all the good characteristics of a benchmark that people are going to use. Um, so it hits all of those wonderful things, right? Which is really, really good. But when you build a market, we have a rate. We got to now make this. And well, the rate was born April 3rd. April 3rd. Now, this is something she worked on directly to create this new transition and lending rate to this SOFOR rate, which is secured overnight financing rate, to replace LIBOR, which has been the standard forever. Period. Right? Now, th think of this for a moment. This is your big hint to understand LIBOR isn't going to decide XRP price. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is this is all the evidence we all need to understand we are moving to a new system. And it starts with the lending rate in the derivatives market. She just told us that. And what the hell is she doing at Ripple? Well, it gets even better because she's not just at Ripple anymore. She's now been elected as recently as December 14th. And shout out to the handful of people that sent this over to me. She is now on the board at the Bank of New York Mellon, BNY Mellon Corporation. Sandy O'Connor is an independent director, effective December 13, 2021. With the addition of Ms. O'Connor, we'll have 13 directors, 12 of whom are independent. We're thrilled to welcome her to our board. Sandy's deep expertise in risk management, financial regulation, capital markets will make her an excellent asset to BNY Mellon's board with extensive experience as senior leader in public... Uh, publicly traded large global financial institutions saying it will bring valuable insights to the board. She goes on to here and gives her background and this, that, and the other. Look, this to me says everything we need to know. It's like a transition team being brought on from Ripple to now into BYN Mellon, who is obviously a Ripple partner for a very long time at this point. This is, 
is also more evidence when Rosie Rios tells us, and she says this, it's her catchphrase, the train has already left the station. You guys know this. We've covered this. Gene Simmons, shout out to you, my friend. He tells us he also holds XRP as well. We know what's going on here. This is the 43rd treasurer of the United States. Her name is on more than a trillion dollars floating around the world. And for her, it's cryptocurrency XRP advertises the ability to facilitate cross-border payments faster and cheaper than traditional foreign exchange services. It's not just the future. It's already being used all over the world. And I'm going to give you evidence of that right now. And this is what I'm talking about. Think about the complement of, of this LIBOR rate transition, the lending rate for banks around the world, moving to this new rate for which the person that helped create this is at Ripple and now a board member at BNY Mellon for the transition of all of this. Now I'm going to give you real boots on the ground proof that it's already being used, just like Rosie Rio said. Shout out to John Deaton here. Crypto exchange Coinbase is now offering cross-border payment services to enable customers transfer funds using Ripple XRP and the stablecoin USD coin. And I pulled this article right here from his tweet, the crypto giant. This is back in 2019. How long this has been in the works here. This is just an example right here that were being used. It's already being used. We know there's a private ledger for central banks as well. I'm just giving you a real example of back in 2019, this was the goal to use XRP to settle cross-border uh, or to affect cross-border payments by helping to settle these transactions. And the stablecoin, USD coin right here, offering the cross-border services to enable customer transfer funds using Ripple XRP. This is even more evidence from Derek Mench right here, who gives us the, the facts of MUFG, who's been a long-term Ripple partner, joined the utility settlement coin, which has always been a huge contention about whether that's going to compete. And the reality here is this, is that MUFG announced it had joined RippleNet Advisory Board originally known as the Global Payment Steering Group, as it works extensively in fintech arena to provide better services to customers and society in partnering with Ripple. The intention is to address the pain points of existing systems and challenges of cross-border payments, including delays, costs, lack of visibility. You know the rest of it. It's already being used. And for whatever life utility settlement coin may have in it still, I can tell you it is not going to harm the intended use of what we're talking about here. This is a full article where you can read even more about that with MUFG. But look, you know, at the end of the day, where is all of this going? We see technical analysts who we have a great appreciation for here on this channel. Tell us what they see on the charts, right? 260 days of consolidation for XRP in this wedge that's shown here by Crypto Bull. Something big will happen in the next three weeks, he says. I asked a question in a response tweet on this. Uh, you know, will the court case have something to do with this? Or will the, the whatever the something big will happen in the next three weeks come from just the market itself? I don't know the answer. I do not know the answer. But I have to believe, for me, the real explosion has to come from some kind of forward motion in this case, if not the actual settlement of the case itself. But nonetheless, we see a lot of people, Coins Kid and many others, tell us 450 is the short-term goal here, Dark Defender $5, and now BitBoy2. Take a listen to this clip here. I, I, I think the XRP, here's the thing about XRP. Due to the suppression of XRP in the first half of this bull run, if we still are bullish and we are still going to see prices go up, XRP is one of the only coins that I believe will not return to levels where it is now. Ah. At the price being 87 cents, if we get the favorable outcome in the near term here, the price is going to go so high that even when we enter a bear market, you will still see the price of XRP above where it is now. That is why I think XRP is so significant against the rest of the crypto markets. I, I it's a really great point, and I happen to concur with his his analysis here. 
that regardless of what it goes to, whether it's $4, $5, whether it's the aid of the case ending or some kind of forward motion there, or whether it's just a market responding, when this bull cycle does end and prices retrace back into a bear market, I do believe, as he says here, that wherever those lows return to, it will not be to the same place that we have been experiencing for the last three to four years. That's just my personal opinion. That's just my digital perspectives. That's not financial advice for me or anyone else. So that's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe, ladies and gentlemen. I'll catch all of you on the next one.